Christian, we're going to ruin this movie for you. Oh, yeah, you're no, you're no, still no. going to go did, back and watch it at some point. Yeah, yeah, but it's basically space. the idea of Space Sweepers is humanity, the Earth, you, you can't live on it. It's terrible. It's hot garbage. It's climate change galore. And this genius dude creates an organization. Richard uh, Armitage. Richard Armitage. Thorne. From, uh, from uh, Thorne The Hobbit. Shield. So right. his, get his name right. He sounds just like Thorn, by the way. Yes, <laughs> very, very much so. But he basically is this super old human at like 100 plus something. He's created a space. <laughs> Which they don't explain at all, by nope, the way. Nope, the nope. They, they, and he's created this space uh, space kind of organization where people are living in these, you know, very much kind of like Gub- Gundam-esque like Ooh. space colonies. You know, they're floating around Earth, their satellites. And the ultimate goal is to get everyone to Mars. And he's only allowed really, what, like 10%, less than 10% of the Earth to actually leave Earth and live in these space colonies. Elite. Elite. Uh, the elitist, right? It's the very kind of like, you know, classism is a very big key thing in this in this film. I don't know if you noticed when they showed like the shots of the people on the planet, but I'm pretty sure it was just like all white people. Oh, no. <laughs> I think it was a meta commentary Wait, on like who Perhaps. this guy considered the elite swear yeah. of the uh, of the planet. Uh, oh, so, so it's very much kind of like this futuristic, you know, doomsday s type world, but there is a glimmer of hope. But what I think this film does really, really well is the world building, right? Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it runs in just under, I believe, two hours. It's two hours and 15 minutes. Okay, so just over two hours. Um, but it packs everything in terms of, like, a very compelling, interesting story about where humanity's future is going to go, but then also giving you the backstory of who this psychopath devil maybe is um, and kind of how this world functions and exists and, and whatnot. And I think like movies like this, Wandering Earth, they do a really good job at this world building where, you know, American counterparts don't do things as well in terms of, you know, creating a, a futuristic dystopian world, making it kind of just feel like, oh, this is really, really stupid. You know? I, I also really like the characters in this movie. And I think like, again, to make the comparison to Wandering Earth, like... What I liked about that movie were the characters in the movie. Like, I thought there was a little bit more depth or a little bit more care to those characters. While you take, you know, let's take the Western blockbuster, a Marvel movie, where they throw in so many characters and it's like, I don't know who Caped Man number four really is. And, like, I guess they were cool, but what was their characterization? Well, this movie, like, it has a smaller cast. You know, there's four main crew members essentially on the ship. And so there's a lot of time that you get to spend with them. You really get to know them and and such. And you kind of care. You, like, I cared about these characters by mm. the end. And so I, I that's what I, like, really, I really dug about it. And, like, when you compare it to some of those other, quote, unquote, like, Netflix guilty pleasures, right? Like the... You know, for you know the um, the triple frontier that you really like, and um, what's the other one? Uh, extraction. Extraction, right? Yeah. You know, I didn't get in as into those characters because I didn't th- think they did like a good job characterizing them. No, it like for me at least, it was awful. But like for these, like, and I wouldn't say like it was great. Like <laughs> it was like award winning like characterization and like super a super unique story. Like definitely not that at all. But I still cared about the characters and I loved like the banter and I, it felt like. This was a movie that worked on that, like worked on the acting craft and making sure that these characters had real relationships. And like it was just more believable than like Oscar Isaac and Ben Affleck to me, you know? How dare you? Oscar Isaac and Ben Affleck were superstars and are superstars and will be always. So a couple of uh, interesting facts with this film. So it's Korea's first space blockbuster. Um, I've heard much, a c- much like Wandering Earth was China's just the first for China, yeah. yeah. So, and, and don't get me wrong, so, like, South Korea has done a, a really good job with horror films, thrillers, um, sci-fi in general, but they have not done, like, a space opera to this kind of scale and magnitude um, ever, so that's kind of interesting. And then since this release, it's been number one in 16 countries on Netflix, which is, I think, super awesome. Really cool. They also have multiple languages in the show, like... In the movie, I should say. There's so like, French. There's, so the main ones are Korean, but Richard Armitage is an English character. Like, he's is an American. Well, not American. He's, like, British. Um, he's devil. <laughs> he's, like, a devil character. He's from, like, Paradise. <laughs> oh. But he's he definitely speaks English throughout the entire movie. Um, so they actually mix languages in there, um, which I think That's has more of an international appeal yeah. um, to the movie. 